today to what Peter himself would probably describe as the moment of his greatest failure. You know, Peter had a lot of these moments of failure in his life. You simply cannot read the Gospels without seeing that Peter was a man who failed often. He made a lot of mistakes, and there were probably a lot of nights when he lay awake in his bed wondering how he could have been so foolish. But this moment, I think, this is the one that haunted him the most. Now, this story begins at the Last Supper. Jesus and the Twelve are gathered at a home in Jerusalem. They are there to celebrate the Passover meal. And it's only a matter of hours before Jesus will be arrested and put on trial and crucified. And Jesus has been telling the disciples for some time that this was going to happen, but they still weren't prepared for it. So at the Last Supper, Jesus begins to talk about it one more time. We're in Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 31. Then Jesus told them, this very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Well, Jesus and the twelve then leave that home in Jerusalem. And they go outside the city. They go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And it's nighttime now. And Jesus goes off by himself to pray. And while he's praying, the soldiers come and they arrest Jesus. And they take him to the high priest to be questioned. Now when Jesus was arrested, all the remaining disciples, they scattered. They were scared and they ran. The soldiers take Jesus one way, and all the disciples are going the other way. All of them, that is, except for Peter. Verse 58 says, But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. And we're going to pick up the story now, starting in verse 69. Now, Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. You know, there are some sounds that we just don't hear very often living in the city. And one of them is the sound of a rooster crow. you, you got to go outside the city to hear that. In fact, if, if a rooster started crowing tomorrow morning at sunrise, that, that would really surprise us. It'd probably make me mad. You, you don't hear roosters in the city. But if you ever have heard one, then you know that sound. It is an unforgettable sound. And Peter knew that sound. Peter grew up in Galilee. That's a very rural area. And in an area like that, you hear the rooster crowing every morning. It's God's way of 
saying it's time to get up and get moving. That, that a new day is beginning. Peter had heard thousands of roosters crow. But of all the times and all the roosters, this is the one that he would never forget. Well, Peter told the story of that rooster so often, it was written down four different times in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they all tell this story. Now, none of them were there when it happened, but they all knew about it because Peter told them all about it. And then the story got repeated over and over again by the first Christians, and for 2,000 years, this story has been told and retold. And as long as this earth remains, people will keep talking about this story. And I'll tell you why. It's because we understand this story so well. Yeah. Huh. It's because this story is the story of us. We can see ourselves right in this story. So allow me to retell the story for you today. It's very late on Thursday night. Jesus has just been arrested and taken to the home of the high priest. Now most of the disciples are nowhere to be found. They have scattered. They have run off into the darkness. They are scared and they are confused. But when those soldiers led Jesus away, Peter decided to follow them. Remember, he was the one that promised, look, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Not me, Lord. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll all run away, but not me. So at this point, Peter is honoring that promise, and he follows the soldiers to the home of the high priest. Now, there's a courtyard outside that house. And when Peter gets there, the soldiers have already taken Jesus inside to be questioned. But there's a crowd of people out there in that courtyard. And Peter decides he's just going to blend into the crowd. And he's trying his best not to be noticed. And everybody there is just waiting to see what's going to happen to this Jesus. And Jesus is very well known in the city by now. His teachings and his miracles have attracted a lot of attention. So there's all these people in the courtyard, and Peter is among them. And he's probably got his robe pulled down over his head. He's trying to stay low. And like everybody else there, he's just waiting to see what's going to happen to Jesus. And it's right about that time... Verse 69 says, a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. Now those words sent fear racing through Peter's mind. Mm -hmm. Because he's just been recognized. He just got connected with Jesus. And he doesn't want to be the next one the soldiers drag off in chains. So he's got to think fast, right? He's got to think fast. But the only thing he can think of to say is the same thing that you've all said so many times when you were guilty and you didn't want to admit it. Go ahead. You'll recognize the words because you've said it yourself. Peter said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Now, Peter doesn't know if the crowd is going to buy it. So while they're looking at him and wondering, he heads for the gate. The next verse says he, he went to the gateway. But another girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. Well, the noose is starting to tighten now, isn't it? Peter's trying to stay calm, but his heart is pounding in his chest. And now there's nothing left to do but, but repeat the same lie he already told. <laughs> he denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. Only now the crowd is really pushing in on him. And now they're looking closely into his face. And someone else says, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Mm -hmm. mm. Praise you. Have you ever been caught dead to rights? Yeah. And you just be 
flying anywhere? You, you just tell the same lie you've been telling, only this time you add a little force to it, you put a little drama behind it. You've done that. And that's exactly what Peter does. He began to call down curses on himself. And he swore to them, I don't know the man. Now that's the third time that Peter denied Jesus. And at that very moment, the rooster began to crow. Yeah. So that's the story. That's what happened. Now let's talk about why it happened. Why did Peter deny knowing Jesus? Well, the simple and obvious answer is that he was scared, right? He was scared. And that doesn't make his denial okay, but it does make it understandable. But we got to dig a little deeper into this story and try to see it through Peter's eyes. First of all, things appear pretty hopeless for Jesus at this point. Uh -huh. I mean, the, the religious leaders have been gunning for him for some time. They finally got him. And it, and it doesn't look like they're going to let him live. I mean, it, that much seems pretty clear. And all those times Jesus talked about the fact that he was going to have to suffer and die, well, Peter's starting to see that maybe Jesus was right about all that. But there's something else that you don't want to miss in this story. Did you notice who it was that first accused Peter? Verse 69 tells us who, who first accused him. A servant girl. You see, that's a very important part of the story. Peter denies Jesus to a servant girl. Not to the high priest. Not to the soldiers. Not to anyone important. Peter denies Jesus to a servant girl. See, he wasn't expecting to be questioned by someone like that. It caught him off guard. And he just blurted out an answer. I don't know what you're talking about. And then once he denied Jesus that first time, well, now there's no turning back. One lie leads to another. You see, I think Peter was ready to die for Jesus that night. Remember, when the guards came to arrest Jesus, Peter's the one that drew his sword, and he started swinging. This man is no coward. He is ready to die for Jesus. And he knew the risk when he followed them in the courtyard of the high priest. He knew the risk. And I really believe that if Peter were questioned by the high priest, I think he would have said, yes, I am a follower of Jesus. I think he would have said it with a smile on his face. I think Peter would have followed Jesus right to the cross because that's the kind of man Peter was. He was ready for anything. But he wasn't ready to be questioned by a servant girl. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, he lied. And one lie leads to another lie, leads to another lie, and that's how Peter finds <coughs> himself in the moment of his greatest <coughs> failure. <laughs> And it was a failure that would haunt him for the rest of his life. But you know, there's one thing that brings us all here today. We are here today because this is not a book about failure. Amen. This is a book about forgiveness. This is a book about redemption. This is a book about rising up from our worst and becoming God's best. And that's exactly what happens to Peter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that we've looked at Peter's failure, let's, let's take a look at his redemption. And I would suggest to you that Peter's redemption begins with that rooster's crow. Mm -hmm. yeah. All four Gospels tell us that the rooster crowed the moment after Peter's third denial. And you better believe that in that moment, Peter was remembering those words of Jesus. They were ringing in his ears. Jesus said, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. So the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered those words of Jesus. Now, when Jesus spoke those words to Peter, Peter didn't believe it, right? Remember, Peter started boasting. He said, I'll never fall away, Lord. Maybe all those others will, but not me. Not me. No, I'm not the one. But now Peter's remembering those words of Jesus, and he 
sees that he is the one. He did fall away. The words of Jesus were true, and now Peter's coming back to the words of Jesus. And that's where his redemption begins. Yes, yes, yes. You see, no matter how hard or how far you fall, your redemption always begins when you come back to the Word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, the Gospel of Luke includes one detail that the others left out. Luke tells us that the moment that rooster crowed, the Lord turned and looked straight at Mm. Woo! Mercy! Mm. I, you, you're going to have to use your imagination here for a moment. I want, I want you to imagine this one moment in history. The guards are now leading Jesus away. And in this one moment, Peter shouts his third denial. The rooster crows. And Peter looks up. And Jesus is looking right at him. Mm. Mercy. Yes. And by now, Jesus' face is bloodied and bruised from the guards. Yes. Eyes almost swollen shut. And there's this moment that is frozen in time when Peter looks at Jesus and Jesus is looking right at him. And Jesus doesn't say a word. He doesn't have to. He just looks at Peter, and that look says more than any words ever. Can you imagine what that look must have said? It was a look that said, you told them you don't know me. Look at me now, Peter. Do you know me now? It was a very but it was also a very compassionate look. It was a look that said, I hope you finally see how weak you really are. And I hope you know that I don't blame you for your weakness. Mm. Yes, Lord. Praise yes, Lord. Lord. And that look was the next step in Peter's redemption. Yes. You see, no matter how hard or how far you fall, God is always looking right at you, and he's saying the same thing. He's saying, look, I, I hope you see how weak you really are. Yes. Yes. But I hope you know that I don't blame you for yes. this. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Yes. Praise the Lord. And then lastly, it is Peter's tears that lead to his redemption. Mm -hmm. Verse 75 says that he went out and wept bitterly. He wept. Peter saw what he had done. He had failed. He had denied Jesus. And he saw how much that denial hurt Jesus. And now he is weeping bitterly. Now Judas also wept after what he did to Jesus. But Judas' tears only led to suicide. <laughs> Peter's tears lead to repentance. Mm, yes, yes. Peter's tears meant that his heart was breaking because of his sin. So Peter's tears became part of his redemption because Peter's tears led him back to Jesus. Now look, as we talk about this moment of Peter's failure and redemption, please, my friends, please be holding up your mirrors. Did you bring your mirrors today? You need to hold them up now. You've got to look for yourself in this story. Because this is not just a story about Peter. This is a story about you. Yes. Yeah. God didn't tell you this story so that you'll know who Peter really is. He told you this story so that you know who yes. you really are. Yes. So hold those mirrors up. Keep them up. You see, even though this is Peter's moment of greatest failure, do you see that Peter was 
closer to God. Yes. Hallelujah. And I really hope that's the story that your mirror is telling you. Yes, yes, yes. One final point I want to make. Have you ever asked yourself where this story came from? How did this story make it into all four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all tell this story. So how did they hear about it? Who told them? Peter did, right? I mean, none of them were there when it happened. So Peter must have told them all about it. Now, here's my point. I don't think we would have done that. Well, come on now. You know why? Because we all work hard to cover up our shame. And we really want to hide our failures. But not Peter. Peter fell, and he fell hard. But then Jesus picked him up, and then Peter couldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> He couldn't stop talking about what Jesus had done for him. Yes, yes, yes. And because Peter was so willing to be open about his moment of greatest failure, billions and billions of people now know about his moment yes. of failure. Hallelujah. And watch me now. His failure has helped them get even closer. Well, to come on now. You understand? Yes. You see, as Christians, we sometimes have this tendency to pretend like we are above sin or above shame. Well. But all that does is help convince the world that we're really just hypocrites. You see, our message is not that we never fall or that we never fail. Our message is that we do fall and we do fail. And our Jesus is always there to pick us up. Yes, yes. Yes. to spend 